itself. As they were walking along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have dens, and the birds in the sky have nests. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus said to another, Follow me. Then he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Then another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say goodbye to my family. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. You may be seated. Today's sermon is, Get Your Butt Out of the Way. I know some of y'all, I said, but, y'all, I know what y'all thinking. Y'all thinking that song back in the, in the 90s, doing the butt, do, do. Some of y'all, remember dancing, now some of y'all see, some of y'all too old and say, to what y'all were doing. And Sir Mixelot had that song, I like big butts. Yeah, we knew he was talking about, you know. But that's not the butt I'm talking about. I'm talking about a different kind of butt. This, this butt is a conjunction. I remember the song, Conjunction, Junction, What's your function? Picking up words and phrases and clauses. I mean, y'all remember that. It's a conjunction. And I, I checked with my, my favorite teacher, Sister Martin. And she told me a conjunction is a word that joins together sentences, clauses, phrases, or words. It is used to introduction, introduce a statement that adds something to a previous statement and usually contrasts it in some way. The word but tells, tells you that what you said right before the but doesn't really count. Right. It's kind of like, I love you, but. Right. Now, if you hear that from somebody, what's the next thing you're thinking? Oh, here it comes. Right? But if someone says but, that means that what they said right before the but is connected, but it has nothing to do with it. It's a contrast. It's a conflict there. So we need to understand that we need to get our butts out of the way. See, we must understand there's a cost to follow Christ. See, some of us think when I get saved, I just get saved, and if I come to church, I'll be successful. No. You got to do a little bit more than that. Now, work doesn't save you, but you get saved to do God's work. Amen, somebody. You get saved to represent God everywhere you go. And God brings success because you're representing Him well. So when we look at our text, we have Jesus talking to three different people. And He, and he, and he, he approaches each of them in a different way. If you listen to it, it sounds hard. But when you think about it, you understand where he's coming from. The first person says, I'll follow you everywhere. And Jesus goes, I don't have any place to lay my head. What he was saying was, there is no place I, I can go and find peace for my persecution and my suffering. No place safe. What he was telling that followers, if you want to follow me, you're going to have to go through what I go through. And he knew this person's heart, that's why he said it. See, Jesus, when he said stuff to folks, it wasn't just an off-the-cuff remark. He knew that person's heart, that they weren't willing to go through that. I will follow you, Jesus, but it has to be comfortable. I follow you, Jesus, but I have to be able to do what I've been doing. I follow you, but the second person, he said, you know, um, I need to bury my father. Now, this is the highest duty for a Jewish person to, to, to bury the father. It was an honor. It was, it, 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 we, we looked through the commandments, and what was the first commandment promise? Honor your mother and your father to days may be long upon earth. So he's trying to say, well, you know, let my dad die first, and let me bury him, and then what I'll do is I'll follow him. But Jesus said, the for my sake and for the kingdom's sake, I have to take precedence over everyone. He even said, you can't follow me unless you hate your mother and your father. And what? Right. 
Because if you love them more than you love Jesus, you're not following Jesus. So again, that, that's it. That's it. He, he was saying, when folks are spiritually dead, you let the spiritually dead take care of them. You take care of my kingdom and do what I told you to do. I'll follow you, Jesus, but I have things I need to do first. Come on now. The third person we get to, he said, I need to go say goodbye to my family. I need to go tell them goodbye. I need to go over, you know, Pookie and them and say goodbye first. I need to talk to Sancho and them and say, I, you know, I got to go Jose and them, you know, and Shanique and them. We got, I got to say goodbye to my homeboys and homegirls and let them know I'm leaving the follow. Them. And what Jesus said is no person puts their hand to the plow. And it looks back to the worthy of the kingdom of God. How many folks, see, nowadays we have tractors and stuff to do all that. But back in the day, when you were plowing the furrow, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You had to hang on, and you had to guide the plow to make sure your furrow was straight. All right. And if I look back to see where I've been, yeah. what's going to happen to the plow? It's going to get all off track. Then I'm going to have not a straight line, I'm going to mess up line. When you decide to follow God, you can't look back to what you used to be and what you used to have. Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. She was told, don't look back to where you came from. And basically what it was saying is, you can't go further than God if you keep hanging on to what you used to have to do. God, I'll follow you, but. See, we spend our time doing too many things. God asks us to follow us. He promises to bless us. And then we wonder, man, why is God oh God opening doors? If God has an opening doors for you, ladies, it's probably because you need to get your butt out of the way. All right, all right. See, here's the problem. This is what we say to God. God, I will trust you, but. God, I will stop, but. God, I will go, but. God, I will forgive, but. God, I will love, but. God, I will stop smoking weed, but. God, I'll start, stop smoking cocaine, but. God, I will stop lying, but. God, I will stop fornicating, but. God, I will stop cheating, but. God, I will stop procrastinating, but. God, I will use my gifts, but. God, I will sing, but. God, I will accept my call to ministry, but. All right, all right, all right. How many of your blessings are you blocking because you won't get your big fat butt out of the way? God wants us to do it His way. He wants to revive the church. He wants to have His very presence. See, when we read the book of Acts, that wasn't unusual. That's what God wanted to happen in church. God wanted to bless and pour out blessings. He wanted us to walk by and our shadow hit people and they got healed. He wanted people to get delivered. He wanted the church to grow daily. See, you read the book of Acts, every day somebody's trying to become part of the church. Why? Because God's presence was there. All right, all right. And today, God wants to move. And we go, God, I want you to move, but... All right, all right. I want you to move my way. I don't want no my shouting, Lord. I don't want anybody to knock the pews over, God. I don't want anybody to get slain in the spirit. Right. I don't want to see folk get delivered. We, the Lord Jesus, you know, we're trying to keep the service under an hour and a half. And God, if you start moving, we may be in here two or three hours. I want you, God, but. God, you know, I want you, but this, this young lady over here has my eye. And, you know, ooh, if I can just get that straight, I'll follow you. Come on. I want you, but, well, you know, God, that young man told me I was fine, and, you know, I'm trying, you know, I want to I wanna have somebody, because I don't want to be alone, so I'll follow you, but I have to get that Hello, somebody. All right, man, right. We want God to move, we say we want God in our lives, we say we want God, but we can get our butt in the way. And if we really want God to move, we gotta get our butts out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. If 
We have to follow him unconditionally. We have to say, God, I'm going to follow you and watch the success from. Did, did he say that he would do that? Did he say that? Yes. Yes. He said, I'll supply all you need according to my riches and glory. He said, it ain't about you. I got this. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. This is my world. Just follow me. We say, okay, God, Lord, I'll follow you, but we got to stop doing that, church. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was talking to a preacher who was talking about his lack of faith, and he said this to him, preach faith till you have it. And then because you have it, you will preach faith. He said, preach faith until you have it. And then when you have it, you'll be able to preach faith. In other words, we've got to stop looking around going, well, you know, I don't have this. I, you know what? Start speaking it, and you'll have it. Amen. Start Amen. speaking faithfulness to God until you have it. Start speaking success in God until you have it. Start speaking prosperity in God until you have it. Start speaking faith in God until you have it. Start speaking healing until you have it. Start right. speaking deliverance until you have it. Get your butt out of the way. God wants to move. And we've got to move along with him. We want our children to follow God. Let God move in your life. And let them see God move so they know that they can depend on God. You want relatives to come to church? Let God move in your church. People will come. Charles Finley said, if you want to get folk in your church, set yourself on fire and everyone will come watch you burn. Stop saying what to God. Get your butt out of the way. Stand on your feet. Amen. Amen.